Journal of Adrian Amakir, Day One. Before the sun rose, Varian and I set out to, to hunt some elk for food and forage for other supplies. The ranger daredevil was itching to hunt more so than I. I killed my first elk, and he almost lost his kill. But we killed two elk nonetheless. Not long after, we had turned from the hunters to the hunted. We were attacked by two big black bears. Even though we had the advantage with it still being dark, one bear managed to knock me out cold. I don't know what Varian did, but somehow he dodged and managed to kill both bears. I swear he's never going to let that go. After I came to and had time to heal, Varian brought to my attention that these beasts had been branded with a mark that we had never seen before. We traced them back to where their tracks met with ours. Another set of footprints, not the beasts, which had been with the bears, broke away from them and headed straight towards our village. I sent Varian to scout ahead while I trailed behind. From the edge of the forest, we both saw the two figures. Long, straight black hair, red skin, wearing leather armor armed with bows and short swords. They released a raven to the skies, most likely to inform their tribe of our existence. We moved in stealth, but Quickfoot Varian tripped on a root and blew our cover. To make a long story short, well, we're alive but the intruders were killed before we could question them. Uh, the next thing I remember is the two of us were heading to a council meeting and planning on investigating more about these new creatures, where they come from, and how many there are. Though I'm hesitant on leaving my village vulnerable, I suggested that if there's any danger heading towards them that they make haste to the lake and take rafts across. In the meantime, Varian and I, with two others, shall track down these creatures and find out what we can. It is a difficult decision protecting our home and getting the jump on our new enemy. It pains me to say that being in charge and taking action and not knowing the outcome is a risk that I will not take lightly. We shall begin our quest a few hours before dawn. In the early morning of the new day, Adrian, you finish recording your general in journal entry of the events from yesterday. As you are laying down your pen, you hear from outside a startled gasp of one of the younger children and them stepping quickly away. And then you hear kind of a heavy sigh and the burst of flame as something is tossed into the, in the central fire. When you go out, you see Varen with facing the fire. When I look up, you see that my face has been altered. I have just tossed into the fire the last of my bandages. I now bear a massive scar from my left temple across the bridge of my nose through my right cheek into my right chest. Warning, Adrian. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Ah, uh, it stings a little, yes. I give a, a lopsided grin, obviously uh, using my cheek muscles are a little difficult. <laughs> at least you still pull it off well. <laughs> I chuckle and wince at the same time. Ow. <laughs> I'd like to see that done again and again. <laughs> Just remember who took down two bears. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You're never going to let that go. I don't intend to. Not anytime soon, at least. Uh, did you hear your mother arranged for um, us to have 
certain companions along with us. What are you Not doing talking to my mom? Your great great grandmother. Oh, great great grandmother. Okay, now now that that makes a little more sense. Althea. Uh, I I believe I've heard something about a couple companions with us. Um, provided one of them is a healer. Yes, Antenua is coming with us. She's going to be our light in the darkness, as Hearthfire Jeffrey told it. Mm. Provide That's us good. aid, provide us healing if possible, if needed. Um, be our spirit's guard, as it were. And Anna, one of the warriors. Uh, Anna is known to you. She is a very stoic warrior. Um, she is very committed to protecting the community, and whatever job you've assigned her to do, she goes through it without complaint. Although she has not really been tested in all-out battle before. Huh. Well, I think she'll be good on this trip anyway. You can see that I'm going over some things in my head, and at this point, Adrian, would you please give me an intelligence check? So on your character sheet, the far left, you'll see your main attributes. Strength, dexterity, constitution, and intelligence. Click on the word intelligence. Intelligence. It will come up. Okay, yeah, that, that meets... That beats the DC, I said. As you recall the events of yesterday, going over some of the details that you noticed but didn't really think much about at the time, you recall the the pattern of the fur about the bear's necks and shoulders, and especially along their spines and their rumps. You recall that there were certain lines that were indicative of whip marks, old scarring that altered the pattern of the fur. But around the necks and shoulders, the fur itself was kind of matted in a particular pattern, um, suggestive of collars or leash leads of some sort. Yes, I do remember that. Do you share this with me? So I'm sharing with you that the um, bears had matted uh, fur yeah, basically, around their and, uh, necks and everything. And kind of I mean, what it indicated. I mean, it really did uh, kind of indicate it. I didn't say anything back at, the, back at the time, but it was mostly just, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll take this. And if it's any concern of yours, I'm letting you know that they were either owned by these creatures or they could have been used as like pets or guard animals or some kind well that explains the tangle of leather that they were carrying you notice that at my feet i've been going through some of the more odd equipment of the characters that we were fighting yesterday uh among them some very thick leather harnesses with uh, long cords of leather and rope tied to each one. I hold up one, turn it inside out, and show you where various bits of bear fur have was caught in the le in the fiber of the leather. I've been trying mm. to figure out why on earth these would be about the bears. Um, amongst the other equipment that I'm going over, the the two enemies that we fought the day before were wearing leather armor similar in quality, if not in style, to our own. Um, they, they seem to have been stained a very dark color, except for the area over the chest, which carries a strangely patterned symbol of very bright coloring, so it stands out particularly well against the darker background of the armor. Now, is that very similar to the uh, same 
pattern as the brand that we saw it is, in the pairs. You can give me another intelligence check. Another intelligence check? Yes, please, sir. Oh, wow, there you go. It is exactly alike. All right, so this has got to be their their tribe symbol or a deity of some kind that they have claimed as part of their tribe. I kind of look at it, shrug. If you say so, they died just the same. <laughs> yeah, and so will their god. <laughs> I grin. Now that sounds like an interesting hunt. My grin now carries a rather grotesque look to it as a result of the scar that digs through my right cheek. I sure hope the ladies like that scar. I look back over my shoulder. Well, the kids so far don't. Oh, right. Oh. Um, I toss over to you something. It's a crudely carved, um, kind of fit in the palm of your hand, little effigy, if you will, of a bear totem. Ooh. Apparently, some of the children carved that out for you as a token of good luck. <laughs> uh, I didn't get one. <laughs> Would you like one? <laughs> nah, I, 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 I gingerly touch my cheek. I think I have enough of a token as it is. Yeah, I, you got a point there. Uh, at this point... Um, out of the other huts come the two ladies. Uh, where's... Oh, here it is. Good craftsmanship on the bear totem. I shrug. Well, they did their best. Um, Enna, the warrior of the tribe, comes out, sees the equipment at my feet, um, nods to you politely, and helps herself to one of the suits of leather armor. Sure hope it fits. She turns to you, her dark charcoal skin and short, stark white hair uh, reflecting the firelight oddly, and her silver eyes uh, turn up a little bit at the corners, and she says, and she's like, and she just kind of says, one way or another, I'll make it work. <laughs> Antenua, who is a young, a much younger wood elf, Looks at the armor, looks at my scar, kind of gives a little shudder. Um, offers to try and heal it, but I shrug her off. No amount of healing will take care of this. It's pretty much here to stay. <laughs> With that, I stand up, dusting myself off. I was thinking that we would travel to where we found that split in the trail between the enemies and the bears where the bears were apparently, I look at the leashes, let off to go after us. From there, I'll start tracking the bears and their masters back to wherever they came from. That's a good a start as any. All right, I'm gonna move us to the main, to the big area map. is freaking out here. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So I will be taking the lead uh, to scout ahead. Uh, how do you want the other three, yourself, Antenua, and Enna, to march? What would, what would you like the marching order to be? Um, uh, let's have you in front. The two girls in between you and me, and I'll take up the rear. Sounds like a plan. Since I'm not as fast as everybody else is, I might as well just stay behind and make sure everybody else doesn't get lost along the way. I can pretty much find my way through. <laughs> okay. So we set out. Um, as I mentioned... Dawn 
is roughly around 6 in the morning. We're leaving, say, around 4 in the morning, 4 or 5. What are your thoughts? Okay. We travel 3 miles in 1 hour, entering the woods. Here I don't bother tracking. I'm able to follow the trail I left for you the day before, easily enough. Easily. Um, the forest terrain offers us no hindrance under my guidance. And in two hours time, so it is now getting to dawn, I bring us to the point where the bears split off from the unknown enemy's trail. And here, I need my tr tracking difficulty. Give me one second. scroll down a little bit here we go okay so it's been a day since they passed through this area so I'm glad that I'm tracking beasts and since I'm now back in forest terrain mm -hmm. I am using my expertise feature here. Okay. It takes me... Let's see here. It takes me a... Uh, actually, surprisingly amount of time to actually pick up the trail. Um... And when I finally do, you hear me kind of give a disgusted grunt, and I show where the leaves had have kind of drifted in the wind over the over where the trail had started originally, and it caused me to miss. Ah. So I'm going to give myself one more survival check. Oh gosh, I, okay. Apparently, I turned off my advantage. Okay, well, I'm glad I got an 18. <laughs> <laughs> Our start is slow at this point, but I'm able to start working through it. But the going is slower than normal. I'm just going to turn on my advantage here, and I'll turn it off later. Hopefully, I'll remember. I think that bear kind of gave me a little bit of a cough. <laughs> I just kind of glance back at you. Cold. <laughs> okay. At this point, I kind of I kind of sit back, think for a little bit, and grunt. I'm just kind of like, I think they were masking their trail. Ooh, there we go, a natural twenty. That that's nice. <laughs> So let's see, one hour, two hours. So it's now past dawn. Okay, so let's say it's seven in the morning now. Sounds about right. And I'm finally picking up the pace as I finally uncover more reliable trick, uh, more reliable signs of passing through. How many miles have we traveled so far? Nearly ten. I shake my head. Well, actually, give or take. Um, As I, I said, to, nearly. I have I to didn't actually say stop. Exactly ten. But I stop for a second. I'm just kind of like thinking over my head. I'm like, yeah, we've traveled roughly nine miles in three hours. Gosh, I wonder exactly how those beasts uh, can travel. Like, I wonder how far they can go without. 
needing to stop and take breaks or or anything like that along the way. They could have traveled on for miles at a time, not even needing any sleep in between uh, traveling. There was a point, I kind of I point I point back the way we've come, where and I think that's and that's where I actually pick, uh, picked up better signs of their passage, where they actually did seem to have stopped. Should I roll for, for a? Should I roll for intelligence or? Well, if you want to go back a mile and <laughs> examine it, sure. No, 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 no. It's fine. I don't want to backtrack anymore. I suddenly pause. sniff a little bit turn away from the conversation I have that far away look in my eye where I'm just kind of like something seems off what do and your point... elven eyes see <laughs> <laughs> what do your elf so eyes so hard to hold that back what, uh, do your, what do your elf eyes see well in this case it's like wow gee that's racist isn't it <laughs> <laughs> well in this case my nose smells two things I smell water and I smell blood. Ugh. First gave me a very warm feeling that we're somewhere nearby a source of water, but now that you smell blood, that on edge. Stupid bear. I point. That direction is where the trail leads. That direction is where I smell blood. And now you're asking me exactly which way we should travel. The blood might be a sign of where our enemies may be. It could also be... May not. It could also be just a random animal uh, just gone down for a kill. But the blood actually sounds a little more interesting than the source of water. Let's travel where the blood goes. Okay. I'm going right. to switch our maps here. Here we are. That was loud. Yeah, sorry. That's our toaster. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> uh, so I lead us through the woods and the bushes um, to where a small pond is uh, comes into view through the brush and undergrowth. It is almost 30 feet across from, uh, from its widest points. And it looks to be yeah, fairly deep. I mean, it's no lake. As I reach the near the bush nearest that protrudes furthest into the clearing, I pause, bring the I'm bringing our small company to a halt. Look back at you. I look a little disturbed as I step from the bush into the clearing. Uh, Antenua follows my path. Anna will move more into a flanking position where there's spear at the ready and you can move yourself along whenever you want alright oh whoops what'd you do wrong cursor <laughs> wrong cursor use the mouse what you see before you is a clearing where a massive pool of blood has been spilt across the forest floor. Amidst the grotesque pool are various broken bones, completely shorn of any sign of flesh. Scraps of fur are scattered about the clearing, some in the water, some in the bush, some against the roots of the trees hereabouts. It is a gory, smelly mess 
and you can see Antenua um, turns it distinctly more green than she normally is. Oh. Maybe she should stay back just a little bit. Okay. And she is going to step back into the bushes and just kind of like hover there. While Enna is going to move forward, skirting the blood. What happened here? And that is the one million drachma question. What a mess. Adrian, if you like, you can investigate the scene. Alright. So you'll be using your investigation skill. Is that under intelligence or uh, that is under that? skills. It is an intelligence skill, but it's 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 in your skills box. Investigation. Do I need to click on it? Like yeah, check? click click on the intel uh, investigation. The word investigation. Okay. Oh no 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 no, N not nope. the um. Don't uncheck it. Oh, it was already unchecked. So it was unchecked. I was like, oh, do do I need to like uncheck it again? Okay. It was unchecked already. Interesting. Yeah, it was unchecked already. I thought you had investigation as a skill. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah, thirteen's enough. There is clearly to your eyes because because you've studied this sort of stuff at least in passing. Um. There is clearly more blood here than could have come from a single animal. No, I would say at least multiple animals. Or at least one big one. <laughs> but um, then again, if it was one big animal, we would be seeing more bones, more structure of an actual animal. You can investigate the bones as well. All right, let me uh, pull that back up and do another investigation. Uh... Mm. That's not a good investigation check. No. The bones are splintered by some great force pressed against them. Just what type of bones are these? You can give me a nature check. Uh, let me check something. Are you proficient in nature? I... I'm at a three in nature. Okay, so no, you aren't. And no. I am not proficient, proficient either, so I cannot help. So you can give me a nature check. Okay. Do I click on the nature? Yes, please do. The, okay. the word nature. Ooh. Not good. Nope. The bones... Some of them are short. Some of them are long. Uh, you can you can actually find a couple and actually kind of sort of assemble them somewhat slightly together. Um, some of the bones... Some of the longer bones are lighter and less dense. Whereas some of the shorter bones are thicker. I hope they enjoy the bear meat. <laughs> I'm going to scan the ground. Ooh, hey, there we go. I draw your attention to some of the prints in this clearing. I point to some of the smaller prints. Here are deer hooves, and over there are some prints of wolf paws. But there's a third set. Or, excuse me, a third kind. Not... The rem the, these prints over here are reminiscent of wolf prints, but they're larger and not of any wolf I've seen before. Hmm. You 
you can kind of piece together based on what you're seeing. Uh, give me an give me an, an intelligence check. So a straight intelligence. All right. Intelligence. Can't give you a whole lot there. Not a whole lot, but there's enough pieces here to kind of assemble in your mind some idea of a very large or several very large creatures rendering deer and wolf alike into a big mess. Now, I, I do have another question. I'm not sure if you can answer it, though, but how deep are the footprints of the wolves? How deep are they? Yeah, because if they were big enough to ride and have riders on them, that would um, let us know how, or you know what I mean. Sure, yeah. They would let us know that they're like riding wolves or something or the wolf prints are not deep okay so they're they're not like rideable and they're oh, well gosh. wolves aren't much bigger than we are but these other prints the not wolf but wolf like prints they're very i hold my hand over one um it almost looks to be about double the size of my hand. That's like a dire wolf. That is a big... I hesitate to even call it a beast. <laughs> uh, no, that would actually be considered a beast. Just a very large beast. Did we ever find out what the third set of prints were? Um, we did not. Do you, uh, know exactly where each of these prints are coming from? Um. I look around for a little bit. I need to pull up my character sheet here. Yep. Looking at the deer and the wolf prints. Okay. It looks to me like the wolves were here for a couple of days. Maybe they kind of settled on this as a good resting spot or a good hunting ground. The deer, they came through possibly today. The blood is still fr and pretty fresh. And from what I can tell, you turn off advantage. Ooh, there we go. These larger Ooh, nice. prints, the, the very large prints, they came here after the deer. And if I had to guess, it looks like, let me know if you can see this arrow. Can you see the arrow? Yeah. The deer and the really big animals came from that direction. Um, Adrian, comparing that in your head to our original course and where we are now, um, it's possible that the direction that the deer and big prints came from might coincide with the course that we were on. It may. It's a possibility. And then we hear a branch crack in the forest. Uh, where did that come from? I draw out an arrow from my quiver. Ah, uh, the direction I was pointing. Moving through the shadows, underneath the trees, through the brush, comes a crackling noise of branch, rustling of leaves and a very deep throated rumbling drawn out
I think I want to draw out my bow, too. As a very large, four-limbed creature with bulbous eyes and warty, wet skin presses through the undergrowth and looks at us with unmistakable hunger. And at this point, we can roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. So what my initiative was an eight or a five? Uh, did you click on your character token and then roll? So it would be a five. Oh, dang it! <clears throat> Why do I always forget about that part? <laughs> uh, don't worry too much about it. I can just manually add you in. Okay. And it's because you're new and roll twenty mm -hmm. is still an unfamiliar system to you. So I gotta sort this. Give me one second. All right. There we go. I gotta remember to do that. <laughs> You'll get the hang of it. <laughs> and I could always be better about reminding you. Uh, so I'll try and do better about that. Alright, All right. so Antenua is up first. Let's see. Let me look at her character sheet. Okay. I'm going to add aura to her you hear antenna from the brush kind of squeak out a very fright uh, kind of like a it's half sickened half worried stay within 30 feet of me and she's going to cast bless Ooh. I feel already blessed as she was as she whispers out may Seba guide your hand all right, so we can add a D4 to all of our attack rolls. Okay. As long as we're within range of, within that aura of her. Uh, she is concentrating on the spell. Okay. So that's going to be her action. And then she's going to move. She's going to try and stay close so that we can protect her without putting herself too much in danger. All right, so that's her turn. Okay. Adrian, you see me point off in that direction and I just kind of snap out, Adrian, watch out! As... Oh no, not another one. Yep, another one. comes leaping forward, landing in the pond with a massive splash, and then dashes forward with another huge leap, landing right next to Enna, who is looking suitably surprised. All right, so what's Enna got? Uh, she, she's not in direct sunlight, so that's good for her. She is going to spin to this new threat, and she is gonna attack. Let's see here. With her, with both hands on her spear. Oh, and she lands a crit. <laughs> That's handy. Uh, 9 damage. And the toad looks frighteningly unimpressed. Like she she turns, slams her spear into the thing's side, and it just kind of goes at her. And you just kind of hear Anna go, "Oh, this isn't gonna be good." Oh, nuts! The other giant toad is going to leap forward twenty feet. Oh gosh, that's quite a leap. Like, it just jumps clear over all the brush right between the trees and lands with a thick, nasty splash right amidst all the blood. Uh, and it's going to take the dodge action. All right, Adrian, it is now your turn. Okay, I'm already 
I already drew an arrow before those guys showed up. Right. So, what do I do there again? I um. Let me look at your character sheet, your character sheet real quick here. So, um. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. You're going to click on the attack uh, on the longbow attack. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then you can just manually roll a d4. Uh, who are you targeting, by the way? I was targeting the frog closest to Enna. Okay. Uh, all right, and go ahead and you can roll. A, go ahead and roll me a d4 if you want, but I can already tell you all you're right. gonna hit. All right. So you got that down, then a d4. Uh, sooner or later, I'll come up. There we go. All right. So you get a total of 19 to hit. Okay. I gotta play this. Yeah, you hit. Nice. So you, you turn around, spin, you spin around, release the arrow, and it goes slapping into the thing's, uh, into the corner of the thing's mouth. Ooh. <laughs> Four damage. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, might I suggest, as a DM, especially since you're an archer, put some distance between you and that thing. All right. You have 30 feet of movement. All right, let's see. I got to move my screen over just a little bit. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So, no, 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 no. Wrong cursor. Wrong cursor. So basically six squares. About there, I think. That's 20 feet. Is that 20 feet? That is 20 feet. So you have two more squares if you want. One more? I'll I'll take that one right there. Okay. Fair enough. Alrighty. Nice shot, by the way. So well, seeing think... that, you're welcome. Seeing all that, and seeing the amount of damage that that one toad has already taken, I'm going to bonus action cast Hunter's Mark on... I got to get some little tokens up here so I'm concentrating now and I'm targeting the same toad that you you and Enna have both shot and I'm going to roll my attack oh and don't forget to mark the arrows gone from your from your quiver oh right okay, four so I got a 17 to hit uh, yeah that's that's definitely gonna hit and then I add my Hunter's Mark damage. Alrighty. So the Toad is going to take 12, po 12 more points of damage. Alright. And it is now bleeding. There is blood spraying from its wounds. Good and shot. You just kind of hear me as I speed past you. Thanks! <laughs> Antenna, Anna, Anna, get out of there! My goodness, Anna. <laughs> Alrighty, so it's now Antenna's turn. Oops, I opened the wrong character sheet. <laughs> she is going to point at the t at the giant toad next to Anna, and a bolt of flame crashes down from the sky above. Oh gosh. So it needs to make a deck save. Oh, I left it on. There we go. Sorry, give me a second. 60 feet. Sacred flame. Uh, it makes it save. It twists to the side just in time. The bolt of flame slams into the ground next to it and sizzles out. Antenua gulps. Ooh. <laughs> Rather loudly. Stop acting like the frogs and kill them. I'm trying. I don't like to kill things. All right. It is now the toad's turn. No. Oh, no. And this toad, rather angrily, is going to turn towards Enna. Oh, boy. Whoa. 
and she is not protected. Uh, I need to shrink this. Okay, so she is now grappled. Uh, 17. And unconscious. Oh. Great. Uh, let's use this one for grappled. Okay. Anna is now dying. <laughs> so let's see here. There it is. Okay, so she, that is one death save success. Okay. With a mighty bound, the other toad lands flat, uh, lands right on top of the um, bush here, flattening it, and looks at you with its great big warty eyes. And it's going to take good. the dodge action. Thank you. Adrian, it's your turn. Hmm. You're still in the area of the blessed spell. Right. So I will take another shot of a longbow. I really want to aim for his eye. <laughs> the toad right in front of you or the one that's nomming on Enna? Uh, the toad that's right in front of my eye because I don't want to get smashed by him. Go for it. Longbow. And then... Oh my a... goodness. <laughs> D4 roll as well. I can't see what it is. Oh, a four as well. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, 21 plus... Oh, my goodness. 21 plus four is 25, so you ridiculously hit, dealing seven piercing damage. Slap. Oh, and again, don't forget to mark your arrow gone, which I forgot to do for my character. There we go. I did uh, for mine. Just before I took the roll, I took it. Excellent. I am going to... It's my turn. Oh, did you want to move anywhere? Oh, I really want to move closer to uh, Edna. Or Enna. Enna. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I think I want to move about here. Is that alright? Where's here? Yes. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. So you are okay. now, okay. So you are now adjacent to this great big toad. Because so I want to any... be able to take him out. So right. So any action, sorry, any ranged attack you make will automatically have disadvantage because you are adjacent to an enemy. All right. Okay. Could I also at this time switch to a sword and shield or you ending can... my turn? You can draw your sword, but you won't be able to attack and you won't be able to equip your shield because you used your action to shoot. Right. Okay. So just use my... Or, yeah, draw my sword. Yep. Okay, so you've now got your sword in hand. All right, so it's my yep. turn. I am target locked on that toad that's trying to eat Enna. Okay. <coughs> go, buddy, go. Four. Thank you, bless. Eleven to hit, and that just matches its armor class, so I hit. Oh, good. Hunter's mark it takes an additional nine damage. Oh, it is, it is bleeding bad. It is hurt. Something awful. <laughs> All right, top of the round. Antinoa, seeing now nothing between her and the other toad, who is now wounded and a little annoyed. She kind of lets out a yeep. <laughs> uh, okay, so that takes an action. How far away is she? 
it's within range. Okay. She is going to cry out again to the skies above. Missing again. Mm. But then she is going to move. Wait, she's a wood elf, I forgot. So she can actually move five more feet. Alright, the giant toad nomming on Enna. Alright, so the toad is going to make a bite attack against her, even though he's already nomming on her. Yeah. 21 is an automatic hit, and oh. since she's unconscious, it's a crit. She fails, auto fails two death saving throws. She is still alive, but very barely. And she is now swallowed. Oh. <laughs> she is inside the giant toad. All right, so now it's her turn. She needs to make a death saving throw. If she fails, she's, oh, okay, she succeeds. She is still alive. Oh, that is good. two successes, two fails. One more fail and she is completely dead. Oh. This toad is going to leap, not leap. It's going to just kind of like waddle on over to you. All right. And with a great big ribbit, it's gonna come in to attack you. I get a 13 versus your armor class. What is your armor class? Armor class is a 14. You see it coming and you duck backwards just in the nick of time. Or oh. you can narrate your own dodge if you want. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> that was too close for comfort. All right, Adrian, it is now your turn. You have your sword in hand. All right. Uh, I was still going to continue on and help uh, Enna. Okay. And attack that um, toad. Sure. The one and, that's eating her? Uh, yes, but I also wanted to use, along with this action, uh, action surge. Okay. Which means that I could also use one more additional action according to whatever I roll. Okay. So... So let's go ahead and start with the first attack on the toad that's trying to eat Enna. So, so I do short a, sword. Yes, short sword attack. Come on, land the hit. You Remember you got a d4. Oh, uh, yes, I do have a d4 still. Yes, because so. Nintendo has not lost concentration. Oh. Land the hit, land the hit. Oh, 10. Oh, nope. That is a miss. You slice a wart off the toad. Well, that's but what now you can, But now you can use action surge. And action surge. So then I just roll another uh, short sword attack. Yes. So All you right. can attack the same toad or the other toad. Attacking the same you... toad. Okay, and you remember you have a D4. And I do have a D4. Come on, give me bigger that is, rolls. That is added to every single Three. attack. That is a 13. That is a hit. Yes. Six damage to a very badly wounded giant toad, and you kill it. How do you kill it? <laughs> I want to stab this sword straight through his head. Nice. Fortunately, and then, missing and his prone body. And then twisting, mouth. prying his head back, so then it stays open, so then I can get Enna out. Um, so <laughs> with you prying the mouth open, I'm gonna say that she just kind of like limply slides out of its belly in a pool of yuck, yuck, mucus, mucus, <laughs> foam, spit, blood, um, whatever else a toad's gotten in it. Cheese. Um, you can move at this point. Uh, if you want to, but you but basically you won't be able to do anything else. And if you move, you'll be provoking an attack of opportunity from the other toad. I'll be provoking an attack. Oh. So, or you can stay where you are. 
Well... I think I'll stay where I'm at. Okay. In that case, it is now my turn. I'm going to take Hunter's Mark off of the Dead Toad. And I'm going to use my bonus action to switch it to this guy. Because he's all that's left. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And I am gonna take my shot. Arrow down. Whoa, where'd I go? Where'd you go? And roll a d4, even though I already know I hit. Hunter's mark. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Um, that it must have like sliced right between some ribs. Let's see, uh, 13 damage. Looks like meat is back on our menu, boys. I do not favor Toad. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I am going to move again. 35 feet, and I'm going to snap out to Antenua. Get to Anna! Top of the round. She is going to... Splash into the water. There. Okay. And she is going to use... She's. You, you kind of hear her call out... This is the last of my ma oh, my strength. As she lays her hands on en on Enna's prone body hmm. and casts cure wounds. Six healing. So Enna is now prone, conscious, and has six hit points. <laughs> You, you just hear Anna kind of go, Ow! As she comes awake. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Looks around, sees, or sees herself just covered in all the venom and mucus and blood and slime and just like, Ew! You became the creature's entree. You are not funny, Adrian. She's going to stand up, spinning half of her movement. And then she's going to move 15 feet away. Wait, hold on. Not yet. Where'd you go? <laughs> uh, I need to look at something. Oops. Yeah, okay. She's gonna move 15 feet away. Turn around. Wait. I messed something up. Hang on a second. Alright. Okay. Healed six. Okay. She's going to turn around and she is going to hurl her spear at the toad. Ow. <laughs> uh, getting a 12 to hit, which hits. It was one more than she needed. <laughs> Let's throw another toad on the Barbie. Uh, all right, it is now the giant toad's turn. He is, let's see. Oh yeah, he's bloodied and very angry. Let's see, who is he adjacent to? Ooh, he's adjacent to you, Adrian. Yes. Here comes his great big mouth. I get a seven to hit you. Ow. Which misses. Oh, my good. Well, with your armor class is 14, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, that's half of what he needed in order to even hit you. <laughs> so you see this great big amphibian mouth coming at you, and you're just like, nope! Oh, not <laughs> Duck today, underneath. buddy. Duck and spin underneath, and I assume you make a sword attack at his throat. Now, do I need to roll for initiative? Or no, sorry, you're, we're still in initiative. initiative but... We're still in initiative, so instead you you can make attacks. 
Um, can I also switch to um, my shield? Uh, it takes an action to equip your shield, which means you would not be able to attack. Okay, so I'll just attack with my short sword. There you go. So Stab at his throat. Remember, you are still within that D4, and but you do hit. So I got that, and... Ooh! Cool. Uh, okay, 14 to hit. Yes, that hit. Ooh, wow, nice damage. Uh, plus nine. All so right. what? I. So is that more like a stab in the neck, or? Yeah, you did stab him. You, you you slice open a goodly portion, and you can see the inner layers of muscle just kind of working, trying to swallow as blood just spills out across your face. Ugh. You need a bath. <laughs> Good thing we All got right. a pawn. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> no, no, right, no. So... I got one even better. A bath is a pawn us. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I'm going to move over here and interpose myself between that thing and Enna. And I'm going to take my shot. When I remember <coughs> where my character sheet is. <laughs> I crit. Now, as I talked to you beforehand, I do use uh, Brutal Criticals. So Hunter's Mark also gets doubled, but since I use Brutal Criticals, it's three plus six. Three plus six, oof. Uh, so that's nine and 19. Um, yeah, he only had six hit points left. <laughs> down Ouch. the toad goes <laughs> oh he doesn't go down so much as he goes sideways pinned against the ground down <laughs> <laughs> uh. and I just kind of stare at him like oh that was a nice shot <laughs> alright I'm going to take that off nice shot warts and all <laughs> That was, um, I think for a moment, that was disgusting. <coughs> there we yeah, go. I'm coughing up blood, and it ain't mine. <coughs> <laughs> so, how does it taste? Why don't you give it a taste? <laughs> I'm gonna go wash up in the pond. <laughs> You're disturbing, and it's slightly gross. <laughs> And it just kind of looks down at herself and it's like, yeah, I'm washing too. Ew, and ow. Uh, I think at this point we would take a short rest. Yeah. All right, so uh, Antenua has used up all of her spell slots already and is looking rather shaken. <laughs> all right, so what we'll do here is basically just kind of camp down for a moment or two. Um, we'll take uh, our characters will take a short rest, and then and while they do that, you and I will take a short rest. All right. All right, and we are back. After our short rest, uh, Anna looking over at you, uh, very wet now, um, bearing some impressive looking scars. She looks over at you and she's just kind of like, next time, as she moves back over and pulls her spear out of the side of the toad, I'm bringing more spears. And Tenoa looks pale and weary, her reservoir of power spent. And she kind of looks at both of us and she's kind of like, can we try to avoid further conflict? <laughs> I can't really say for uh, your sake that we'll be running into any more cursed, uh, accursed princes, but... She gives you an odd look, like, cursed princes? What? <laughs> uh, don't forget I read it you in can a... recover... <laughs> don't forget you can recover uh, half of the arrows you spent. All right. And at this point, we will, we will also consume some of our, some of our rations. 
um, take two off, one for yourself and one for Enna, and I'll take two off of mine, one for myself and one for Antenna. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm also going to forage for supplies. Hmm. With a nat 20. Wow. I find supplies. All right, so we get some good supplies here. Some new food. All right, so I find twice as many. So I find 18 pounds worth of edible plants. Ooh. Lambus bread. Right. <laughs> uh, I need to find my... Give me a second. I also find... Ooh, some neutral plants. What kind of neutral plants? That is a good question. Would you like to roll it, or would, or would you like me to roll it? Mm. I will roll. All right, give me one second. Uh, that's not the right table. Roll me a D8, if you please, sir. All right, let me get that D8 rolling. Ah. All right, and uh, I find how many plants do I find? One D four plus wisdom modifier, which for me is a three. All right. Oh, this is cool. Mm. I found. Let's see. One D four. Whoops. One D four plus wisdom modifier. I found four hopalot twigs each twig produces um in game mechanic terms enough acid for one vial of acid oh really yep um we can't uh, basically if we break open the twigs it'll spill out a and a vial's worth of acid so if we don't have a means of containing it we kind of just spill it on the ground yeah <laughs> Alright, so 18 pounds of food. Uh, split between two of us, you can add 9 pounds to your total. Alright. So, uh, 5 Three, plus 9. Four, nine, seven, 14. Eight, 9. And. 4. Hop a lot. You're holding on to those twigs, I assume. Uh, I'll give you two if you want. Um, why don't you hold on to them for now? No problem. Cool. Now we have a lot of food. We have some interesting things. Um, all right, we will return to the road. Oh, fix something on your character sheet real quick. Oh, what's up? There you go. Oh, just adding it, uh, just changing the total, because you have more rations now than you had total before. You had eight total before, but now you have fourteen. Um, so I was just correcting the total that you uh, that you're carrying. Oh, 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 oh! I see what you did. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right. So close that. Close that. All right. We will return to the big map. All right. And if you notice, there's now. I'm just going to move our token over for a second. Forest Pond. Yep. So now we know that location. <laughs> uh, we return to the trail. And I'm tracking the beasts again. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I basically just kind of like. I lead you from the forest pond right onto the trail with almost no difficulty at all. Um, before we've traveled very far, however, I suddenly turn aside from the trail and lead you into a, th into a thick grove of trees. And I point ahead, and just over the treetops we can see a column of smoke as from a campfire. Where there's smoke, there's fire. 
I look over at you and I'm like, so do we want to just go while it's daytime or would you rather wait for nightfall? Uh, how far away is it from us? Less than a m- it's- from where we are- hang on a second. I'm just gonna move this forward, okay. So, we're- okay, so it is less than a mile. Let's wait till dusk. Okay. So it's mid morning. Let's say it's ten. We are hid down in the in the in the woods. Uh, if we take it in shifts, we um. Let me think for a second. Ten plus four. Two. Plus four. Six would be dusk. That's enough for uh, if we want to take watch. That's enough for two of us to have a long rest. Mm -hmm. Which would mean a full recovery of spell slots for um, Antenua and myself. I'd say that that's better off that way, so then just in case we get into a skirmish, we're at least at full power. If we want to all of us rest, we could all of us be full, have, a, have the benefits of a long rest before we continue. It just means that we won't have anyone on watch. What if I take watch? Well, hold on, let me think. There's four of us. If two of us rest during the first four hours, and then the other two rest during... The... Oh, never mind. That's enough for all of us to get a long rest. Alright. Alright, so uh, Antenua and I will take the first rest, and then you and um, Anna will take the second rest. Okay, so I don't need to recover any hit hit points, but I'm back up to all my spell slots. Sweet. As is Antenua. Excellent. Well, it's good to know. Okay, night falls. At this point, I look at yeah. Uh, so as night falls. I kind of, I, and you, when we all come out of our trances, I tap your shoulder and, and I point out, so we can go in, bows humming and arrows flying, and not know what we're walking into, or we can scout it out first. Uh, I think we came to scout out first. I want to be able to know what we're up against before we go in and attack. At this point, Enna coughs. I'm not exactly the stealthiest among us. Same with me. Pipes in the antenna. Yeah. So, here's my question. Do you want to know what the green bark that we found la yes. yesterday does? I give one dose of green bark to each of them. So I only have four doses left. this up here real quick. Yep. Make sure I got it right. Okay. Okay, would you roll a D4 for Enna? I'll re roll one for Antenna. Right. Alright. As they eat the green bark, both of them take on a gr more greenish hue and then a brownish hue. Their limbs start to, their arms kind of close into their sides, their legs lengthen, their feet lengthen, and they polymorph into trees. Oh, wow. <laughs> Antenna polymorphs into a tree for two hours. And Enna is a tree for three hours. They are... I mean, we'll, we know where they are. But to anyone else, they look as though they're just young saplings that have been growing here for a few years. Wow. 
Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> and we will move to a new map. Oops. So, we begin our approach stealthily, I imagine. I would hope so. Go ahead and roll right, stealth, stealth check. check. Come on, Paige, we're all up. Stealth check. 16. And we also are able to see in the dark, right? We can see in the dark. Um, most beasts won't be able to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just remember that there are other senses than mere sight. Uh, also recall that you have the cantrip message, which you can use to whisper a message to me that no one else can hear. And then I can reply in the same manner to you. Uh, but I have to wait for you to send to me. All right. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take the lead. And you can follow along. I gotta zoom out here. As we move forward, you can hear in the distance the sound of a stream burbling and bubbling. Maybe a river. It's a little hard <coughs> to tell. I don't cough. <laughs> Noted. Do you whisper the cough at me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so are we still hearing the sound of the, uh, the stream? Yes, it is okay. not changing. I'm circling around a tree, just trying to be cautious. You see me pause for a moment, squint my eyes, and I move forward more slowly and carefully. And you see me just kind of holding up my hand to indicate a pause. Uh, I'm going to use that whispering thing. Uh, sure. Do I need to uh, press anything or roll anything? or? No, it, just go ahead. You just tell me that you want okay. to whisper. Uh, and then you tell me what you're whispering to me. What do you see up there? Steel on the ground. A trap? And you kind of see me gesture for you to move up and join me. Right behind you. Let me point out its location to you. Do you see any others? I'm scanning around, and, the, and then I kind of freeze it for a moment. Over there, not a trap, not like steel. There's something different about the ground. Like uh, a pit? Covered up by a bunch of brush. I'm 
I move forward cautiously and slowly. And then you just kind of see me nod. Okay. Without you whispering to me, I can't say anything. I nod as well, knowing that I understand you. And then I freeze. Like, you just see me go utterly still against the tree in the trunk of the tree squad and squatted down in the shadows and I look back at you and I very slowly back up back to your position yeah and then I point in where's my arrow that direction is there anyone else nearby are they hiding? Not hiding wolves around a tree. Oh, great. At least two of them. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and You can move to little... you can move up to this spot. Whoops. To this spot where I, where you saw me but briefly see what you can see. Alright, let me move my character there. Sure thing. And indeed, over here, you can see at least two wolves laying, in the laying on the ground at the base of a tree. You can give me a perception check with disadvantage if you want to search. Uh, yeah. Let's All try right. that. So I put on disadvantage, mm -hmm. and perception. where's perception? It's in your skills box. Here we go, perception. Yeah, Go okay. You can just barely see the prone figures of at least four wolves all gathered around the same tree. And at least two of them have leads, leather or maybe rope, moving from their neck and chest area to the tree trunk as though they're tied in place. So we know two of them at least are tied in place. The other two, we don't know. Correct. Hard to tell from this distance and this, li and in this light. I move up and I, and I tap on your shoulder to indicate I want to say something. I whisper to you, what do you need to tell me? I can scout around, I can move quietly and stealthily, and I can go quickly if I go alone. Well, if the wolves decide to come at me, Climb. they got a steel trap right in front. And you can climb a tree. That is true. Wolves can't climb. They cannot. Alright, so I'm going to move off. Alright. Slowly, quietly. What is that? I whisper to you, what's that? second I gotta zoom in oh an editing error <laughs> there we go <laughs> hey it happens it does all right so let me see what I can see While you're seeing, I draw my arrow. Just kind of keep me covered? Yeah. You see me pause at the base of a tree? I whisper to you, you okay? I reply, 
another pit trap it looks like at the base of a fallen tree and there's creatures further up oh big big creatures I whisper again are they red skinned no I describe in brief very large they look like wolves but bigger dire wolves great <laughs> they stir and I move quietly back away By now, I'm well out of your sight. Yeah, I can't see you. What's the range on your uh, message cantrip? Can you look at that for me? Uh, what was that? Uh, so on your um, if you go into your spells tab. Oh. And you click that little I next to message. I next to message. Oh, there we go. Yep. So it's a 120 foot range. So you don't you don't need to see me in order to cast message. I just have to be within 120 feet of you. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not a cantrip that misses. You basically designate me as the recipient and whisper so to So you'll be receiving it every single time, basically. Yeah. I'm going to add an aura to your character. All right. 120 foot radius circle. So if I'm inside that circle, you can whisper to me. You have to zoom out to like 37% to see its limits. <laughs> Yeah, I see it now. Okay. You can't see what I'm doing, and I'm currently outside your range. Hmm. Well, that's a little unfortunate. Again, you don't know it, but I'm basically going for a swim. <laughs> Can I get another athletics check? Better. Not good. Ah, there we go. I'm back out of the water. <laughs> So what you don't see, but I'll tell you what I'm doing, I basically found the river that we've been hearing, Yeah. and I climbed partway down the embankment to it, um, and went into the water, whoops, <laughs> uh, it took me a few tries to get out, but I am now out of the water. Um, and moving along the, in the bank, so to speak. What are you up to while I'm doing this? I'm moving around. Trying to get eyes on what I saw? Trying to get eyes on what you saw and also not run into the dire wolves as well. Okay. Also trying thing. to maintain my uh, hiding as yeah. well so can you see them from where you are uh, I'm closer to where the fallen tree is okay and I'm not sure if I can see the dire wolves at all you 
you do have kind of a sense for a brief moment that I might have been back within your range. I still can't see you. Oh, I've gone way past where you are. But you can tell based on what on the stars and the moon overhead, about half an hour has gone. Are we any closer to where the encampment is? Um, without moving closer, uh, you have no way of telling for sure. And since you've left uh, where I left you, I now no longer know where you are. Um, I'm stopped right here, just past the fallen tree and a bunch of other different trees. Yeah. Uh, you can give a survival check with disadvantage if you want to try and detect where I went. I'm actually really close to where the uh, source of water is. Mm -hmm. It is quite you loud. You said a survival uh, check? Yes, yeah, survival check with disadvantage because it's uh, you're basically operating in dim light. Here we go for a survival check. Is that a 19 and a 17? Uh, so 17. Yeah, you're able to pick up my tracks, and my tracks lead that away. Okay. Oh, change. So at this point, you can there. decide if you want to try and message me, or if you want to, uh, sorry, whisper me, or if you want to backtrack. Um, if you want to climb down, you're going to have to give me an athletics check. Or acrobat, oh yeah, athletics check. If you want to climb down, it's basically to, basically to see if you want to if you go for a swim or not. Yeah, I definitely want to try for a swim. All right, uh, make sure you're on normal, and then give me an athletics check. There we go for athletics. Okay, yeah, you uh, you basically see signs of where I went to climb and slid down into the water, and you're able to maneuver around that slippery section of mud and benefit right. from where you can see basically my wet handprints, <laughs> where I finally climbed out and found a more secure route. If that makes sense. Yeah. And you can see that I basically continued around um, the possible camp using um, this kind of rock slash mud wall. Meanwhile, I'm back at where I left you, and I'm like, where'd he go? Oh, so, well, it's a good thing I went this way. There's to. the, uh, I think those are the dire wolves. You are effectively about 10 feet below the level of ground that they're on. Okay. Uh, and I just did a survival check to try and track you, and now I know which way you're going. Basically, I figured out that you went after my trail. Yeah. As you proceed along the, on the bank of the river, below the edge of the, for lack of a better term, let's call it a 10-foot cliff, you see a crudely constructed bridge. I do see the bridge. That crosses the river. There are clear markings. Oops. Um, here we go. There are clear markings in the, in the ground here that indicate um, similarly crudely constructed steps where whoever built this bridge used these basically installed wooden steps to climb up to the surface of the ground. All right. You once again get a sense that I am 
I might be within range of message. Whisper message. Varian, do you hear me? Did you decide to try and follow my trail? I think I was getting a little too antsy. Ah. So basically, in the amount of time it took me to, to reconnoiter the, the camp, uh, you're about halfway. <laughs> it, took, it took you an, an hour, essentially, to get halfway through the area that I went through. No, sorry. It took you an hour to get halfway through the area that it took me an hour. Eh, basically, a half hour. I'm fast. Basically, it took you a half hour. It took me an hour. Yes. If you follow up those steps, you'll be in the open. There are three tents in the area. Two small, one large. I'm working my way back towards you. I kind of see a little bit of the... Uh structures of the tents watch out for tri for traps and pits if um if you want you can move up to the top level using the stairs and you see me crouched near the one of the small tents. The other yeah. tent from you is over here. And there's a... Well, you can't really see it given dark vision. But you can see this large tent here. Yeah. Quite a large tent. I point back at the tent that I'm right next to and can hold a finger to my lips. And then I kind of pantomime a sleeping person. You know, kind of like with my palms pressed together, head laid sideways on it, eyes closed, kind of like... Oh. Yep. Whisper. No, Varian, it's not time for you to go to sleep. I pantomime a palm slap. There is a person in there sleeping. I whisper back. Thank you, genius. I roll my eyes at you. What do you want to do? Hmm. 